Hi. Now quite often you're going to be given a differential equation and obviously you try and look to see if it falls into any particular style. But if it doesn't, i.e. you can't separate the variables or use an integrating factor, then sometimes if we use a substitution we can change it into a form that we should be familiar with. And I've got an example here where we do just that, use a substitution. And quite often you'll be told to use a particular substitution. And for this one, the substitution I'm going to use is to let, say, z equal y squared. And what I'm going to do is change this equation into an equation in terms of z's and x's. Okay, we're going to eliminate the y from it. That normally is the case. Now that means we need to replace dy by dx. And to do that, what we would use in this example is the chain rule. That is, dy by dx is exactly the same as dy by, say, dz. And then we would multiply this by dz by dx. It's as if those two dz's cancel out, leaving us with dy over dx. Well, we need to get dy by dz. And we can do that by differentiating z equaling y squared with respect to y. And then inverting it. So let's just see. If we differentiate z with respect to y, dz by dy is going to equal 2y. So that means that dy by dz would be 1 over 2y. So we've got 1 over 2y. And we want to just leave this now then as dz by dx. OK, I've got a y here still. But let's just leave that in and see if it gets cancelled out. If not, we can then make a substitution that y equals the root of z. But quite often it's best just to leave this type of thing alone for a while, see what happens in the question. OK, well, let's start over here by putting in some of our values. We've got 2 here multiplied by 1 plus x squared and then it's multiplied by dy by dx, which is 1 over 2y dz dx. So let's just put that in, 1 over 2y dz by dx. And then we've got the plus 2xy, 2xy, and we've got equals 1 over y. Now, I can see that this 2 here cancels with this 2, so we'll just cancel that out. Uh, what else happens? Well, if we multiply now through by y, each term by y, I can see that I'm going to get a y squared here. That would be useful because I know that y squared is equal to z. And this y here would cancel out. So yeah, that's what we're going to do. We're going to multiply through by y. So if we do that, we're going to have 1 plus x squared and then dz dx. And then we're going to have plus 2xy squared equals 1. So we can now substitute for this y squared as z. So it did pay not to just change this y to the root of z. Not that it would have mattered, but uh, it does really save us a bit of time. So therefore, we've got 1 plus x squared dz by dx plus 2xz equals 1. Now, I can recognize this style that's coming through here. Let's just put that style down. We'll border this off first of all. Okay, we've done as much work here as we need to. But I can see then that this equation here has this common form. And that form is that dz by dx, normally it's dy by dx, 
plus P times Y, but in this example it's Z equals Q, where P and Q are functions of X, okay? Now, when we have ones like this, these are solved by using an integrating factor. That integrating factor is e to the integral p dx. And the general solution, as I've shown you in an earlier tutorial, is e to the integral p dx multiplied by y normally, but it's now z equals the integral of e to the integral p dx multiplied by q and that is integrated with respect to x. Let's just put that in its own box, okay? So this is something you should be familiar with. I've done tutorials on this. If you're unsure of this idea, just click on the link here and it should take you to that tutorial. So I'm seeing then that this is starting to have this format here. Although I've got the 1 plus x squared in the way here, it should be just simply dz by dx. So what I'm going to need to do here is divide through by the 1 plus x squared. So if we do that, we therefore have that dz by dx okay, plus the 2x over 1 plus x squared okay, multiplied by z equals 1 divided by 1 plus x squared. So you can see, hopefully, that this is now in this particular format, where the p is a function of x, it's 2x over 1 plus x squared. You've got q is a function of x, it's 1 over 1 plus x squared. So let's just put a little star against this one here, so you can see that that correlates with what we've got up here. So that means that if we're going to solve this, we need to work out what our integrating factor is. Let's just put it down here, the integrating factor. That integrating factor then is going to be equal to e to the integral p dx. Right? Let's just put e equals that. And that means that we have got to integrate e to the integral of p, p being 2x over 1 plus x squared, 2x then over 1 plus x squared, and that's integrated then with respect to x. And what we have, if we were to integrate that, is going to be e to the natural log of 1 plus x squared because you should be familiar with the fact that if we differentiate the bottom of this, we get 2x, that's the same as the top, so this is one of those special integrals, f dash x over f of x, which is the natural log of f of x, the natural log of the denominator here. Okay, and if we've got e to a natural log, of something, then you're just left with that something. In other words, this is exactly the same as just 1 plus x squared. Now if I come down here, what we've got then is therefore the integrating factor, just write it out again, simplifies to equal 1 plus x squared. All right. Now we can use our general solution here, which means that e to the integral p dx, our integrating factor, is multiplied by z. So we've got 1 plus x squared multiplied by z equals the integral of our integrating factor. So that's 1 plus x squared multiplied by q. q, remember, is this function of x on the end here, so we would multiply that with 1 over 1 plus x squared, which is really convenient because, as you can see, these two will cancel one another out. So what we've got then is therefore 1 plus x squared multiplied by z equals the integral of just 
1 with respect to x. And the integral of 1 with respect to x is going to be x. And then we've got the constant of integration plus c. Now we can substitute for z. We know that z equals y squared. So if we just say since z equals y squared, if we substitute this into here, we end up with therefore 1 plus x squared multiplied by z, which is now y squared, equals x plus c. And there's your general solution. And you could rearrange it if you like to make y the subject, but uh, essentially that's it. Well, that brings us to the end of this particular example. Um, there are others that uh, are in this series. Best place to find them is on my website, uh, examsolutions.net. Okay, well, we'll look at ones that reduce down to separating the variables.